So my name is uh, Irina Vranius. I'm here to talk about uh, the Video.T project. Um, it's a project, two-year project funded by the uh, Educational Development Fund, sorry, um, from the Association Care Leuven in Belgium. Um, I will talk about what we have accomplished, accomplished in the uh, first couple of months of the project. Um, we have designed an online and created an online education <coughs> environment for language uh, learning. As you can see, we have .de as this extension DE um, as our uh, the concrete um, um, the, the development is done in a pilot study for uh, German language education um, at the Association of Care uh, So this is the outline of my talk. Um, I'll start out by uh, giving you some um, information about the context of the project. Um, more precisely about the use of audiovisual uh, data in second language uh, learning. Um, then I'll talk about the video.ee project. First, I'll uh, say something about the main objectives of the project. Um, then I'll uh, sketch the project des uh, design, the main conceptual uh, concepts in the project. And then, if it gets interesting, I will talk about the two project modules uh, we have uh, designed, the annotation and transcription application uh, for uh, videos, and uh, secondly, an exercise module. So, um, and uh, then I'll wrap up the talk uh, with a couple of concrete remarks. Um, so one of the main questions in language uh, education is how to familiarize students with language used in second language. Um, in traditional language education, teachers will would use just isolated sentences from school grammars or they would just invent uh, examples of languages themselves. But, um, since the early 1990s, with this extreme development of computer technology and the rise of the internet, um, suddenly made large collections of electronically searchable texts um, available, and this also had its effect on language education in higher um, in, at, at universities. Um, so teachers started to. Uh, make use of authentic examples from these uh, large collections of uh, text, corpora, uh, to deliver their language material. Um, and uh, this use of corpora results uh, uh, to increased involvement and motivation uh, of students in uh, the uh, learning material. And uh, a second advantage of use of corpora is um, their search functions enable uh, students to take on an active role um, in the learning process to um, explore language phenomena for themselves, uh, what we call exploratory learning. Now, in, what we see in recent years is that corpus material is ex uh, increasingly extended uh, from written to, to audiovisual data. Now, audiovisual data have the clear advantage of showing language use in concrete communicative situations. Um, they aid, uh, it's easier for students to authenticate um, videos than um, text, written text. Um, thirdly, videos uh, increase listening comprehension of students and they help to deepen um, knowledge. And um, yeah, of course, uh, videos have become widely available through exponential growth uh, of streaming media, among others. Um, now, despite this interest uh, in videos in language learning education, there is still need for a systematic didactic embedding. Um, there have been some initiatives, but they all have suffered from a number of limitations. For example, uh, sheer illustrative use of uh, video, um, only fragmentary offer of video material through offline publications or small uh, scale, uh, scaled um, projects. Um, there's also very, uh, very limited meta information uh, attached to the videos. And um, we also often uh, see that there is only a static coupling of uh, video to one specific content. So that this is where uh, our project comes into the picture. Um, the video.ee project aims at um, developing a didactic tool 
for multiple applicability of audiovisual resources within a digital learning environment. And this according uh, to three main principles. Uh, first, we aim at multiple usability of the audiovisual data. What I mean by that is that we want to be able to use one video fragment um, for different didactic purposes, for different language programs, and for different proficiency levels. So this is what I mean by multitasking. Uh, secondly, we want to promote student self-activation and involvement. And thirdly, we aim at didactic extension to other language uh, programs, so extendability of the project. Um, these key principles are translated into three specific aims. I've, um, you see that they're uh, shown in a chronological order. Uh, first, we designed a fine-grained <coughs> adaptation scheme for the multiple coding of the video data. So I will come to that later. Um, next, we uh, designed a web-based application for the multiple coding of the videos plus an online exercise module. So we wanted to give the students the op op opportunity to uh, deepen and test their knowledge of certain language phenomena. And thirdly, what we want to do is uh, we want to create an open database with didactically annotated uh, screen videos for German. Now, um, I will talk now about the conceptual uh, project design and I will um, tell you uh, something about uh, project partners. Um, so, the starting point for our uh, project it was the, the design of the conceptual architecture. So, um, we want to attach to every video file here uh, represented as a nucleus, um, different parameters on different uh, various levels. So um, this is uh, the principle of layering. <laughs> um, so uh, first layer would be vocabulary features, second grammatical features, stylistic features, and genre. Um, all <coughs> those parameters uh, will be attached to a video on uh, different levels of granularity. Uh, so on the level of the whole file, video file, um, <coughs> as is the case with genre, you attach this parameter to a whole file or just to an episode of the, uh, the video. Um, so why, why this is important? In this way we will have a database of videos um, that can be searched uh, through according to, the uh, to different layers and uh, according to different levels of uh, granularity. Um, now, the complete education scheme looks like this. It consists of universal uh, linguistic uh, phenomena, genre, vocabulary, grammar, discourse. Um, and um, so every, every uh, video file will be coded for a number of these um, parameters, so it can be used for different didactic purposes. So, uh, for example, if you have a video recording of an interview, uh, you can use that um, recording to uh, for grammar or vocabulary training uh, in bachelor level, so in the lower um, <coughs> language proficiency levels, or you can uh, use the same video uh, at a, for a master class where you want to analyze different discursive uh, functions, um, um, uh, yeah, di different um, specifics of that genre, the interview. So. Um, also for us, it was very important that this scheme is flexible enough. So you have some main uh, categories, but we uh, want to give the, the teachers the possibility to add uh, new annotation types according to the annotation uh, task. Um, now, the complete elaboration of the uh, project is, as I said, uh, done in a pilot study for German language education in association with K.L. Um, the partner institutions are uh, less used uh, University College in Antwerp, uh, Catholic University of Leuven, and with two campuses in Leuven and in Korte, and uh, the um, University College and University of Brussels. Now, um, the the project is elaborated uh, under supervision of uh, Heinz Bronner from uh, Lessius Antwerp and uh, Kurt Feert from the Catholic University of Leuven. Uh, now you, you might ask yourself why we chose German. Um, 
Well, as you can see, there is a whole list of various language programs which are involved in this project. So you have very small written, but uh, it's applied in the states, commercial science, business communication, um, literature, commercial engineers, and so on. So this is one factor, and the second one is uh, we, we deal with a relatively small uh, population of students that uh, take uh, German courses. So German constitutes really an ideal uh, test environment uh, to implement uh, this new educational um, technological tool. Um, now, the innovation of uh, our project lies on uh, several levels. First, um, this concept of didactic layers around the core of audiovisual files, which will ensure wide usability of and self activation of students. Secondly, uh, we want to create a, a database with a language phenomena on the basis of a fine grained annotation structure, which I have shown. And, and this way, it will be possible to search for micro phenomena. Um, in a video. And thirdly, uh, we will use videos from recently developed online streaming databases such as VRF, Virtual Value, Speak Repository, and so on. Um, VRF, um, I don't think you're familiar with it. It's a Belgische Rundfunk. Uh, it's a, um, a television broadcast of the German speaking community in Belgium. So we have a German speaking <laughs> community in Belgium as well, and uh, we have an explicit uh, agreement with them to use their uh, videos. <coughs> um, okay, so now after sketching the conceptual design and the theory behind uh, the project, I will uh, talk about the two project modules we have designed. So this annotation application and secondly this exercise module uh, where students <coughs> can, um, make as exercises um, um, on the different um, language phenomena. Okay, so uh, what we wanted to do is um, create an online application for this data. Um, the, um, and this was realized uh, by the media uh, and learning division in Leuven. Um, I think some of you know about them. Um, yeah, why online? For us it was very important because in linguistics we already have some applications for uh, annotation uh, of videos, but they all have this uh, disadvantage that you have to work offline, you have to store your data offline, and this makes sharing of data very difficult. So we wanted to make it fully online um, so that we can create an open database uh, across the whole association. Um, the video.de application combines a number of functionalities, such as uh, there's a video player, we have a timeline for navigation to the video, uh, there's a transcription tool, an annotation tool um, according to drop down selection, and uh, you can all, there's also a search engine um, in the application. So now I will um, show uh, some screen uh, shots. So this is the main page of the application. Uh, you see there are two names, the video.ee and the alias. Alias is an other project um, that works with us. Um, their main objective was to create a transcription tool. Our objective was to uh, create an annotation tool. So we combined the two and uh, this is for the result uh, from that. So um, there are four buttons you see. Uh, first button, um, when you click on that, uh, you come to a page where you can manage the different annotation layers. Uh, for an annotation task. Um, second button um, makes it possible to add a video, meta information to a video, and a transcription. Um, fourth button uh, gives access to a search engine, and the, the third button, and the fourth button, um, you can, uh, there you can look at student <coughs> entries. Uh, so this is the main page for the teacher <coughs> instruction. For the student, uh, the first two buttons are of course not active because uh, the teacher is the one who um, decides uh, on what um, annotation, uh, which annotations uh, will be made and he's the one who chooses a video which will be added. Um, so this is how the page for the management of annotation layers uh, looks like. Um, you, uh, on the left hand side you see you get an overview of all the active annotation layers. And and um, it is also possible to add an annotation type um, 
in uh, there. As you can see, uh, the tool is in Dutch. Uh, we're working on that. We would like it to be available in other languages as well, but this is just the prototype that I'm showing. Um, okay, this is the, the, the screen for, um, so you can add an exercise. So, uh, first of all, you add a video link, uh, then you add some meta information about the video, so the title of the video, um, the country of origin, uh, the, the dialect, the language, the dialect, the proficiency level, and so on. And then you also add a transcription um, in uh, that part. Um, after that, okay, so this is what you get. Uh, when you fill in all those elements, and then you're able to annotate uh, your video. This is how the annotation tool looks like. Um, so on the right hand side, you see the active annotation layers. Um, next to the video, you see the transcript that um, is shown synchronously to the video, so it light, lights up at, uh, following the video, every active part of the transcript. Uh, understand what I mean. Um, yeah, so if you want to make an annotation, you just mark the word in your transcript, you then click on the annotation layer you want to add to that word, uh, the word gets the uh, same color um, of, as of the annotation uh, type, and um, you set up, you set the in and out points, the, so the time values of the annotation on the timeline, um, so the, the, the annotation layers are represented on the timeline as with the squares. And every time if you click on that square, the transcription, um, the video will jump to that part of, uh, the, of, of the time in time. And um, also in the transcription you will see that uh, element lighten up and the part of the transcription will also light up. Um, there's also, so this is, uh, when, when the student has um, made an annotation, he can submit his, um, his annotation and then the teacher has the opportunity to check their annota the annotations of the students and to decide, okay, are, am I going to add new annotation layers for students to, to work on um, and to add them to the same video. Um, okay, so as I've sent, uh, said, the annotation tool um, it's created for independent coding of videos by students according to a task-specific annotation template. Um, secondly, annotation layers are predefined by langu language and structure, and we make a distinction between a student version of the annotation and a teacher version. Teacher ver a student version is always seen as a work in progress. Teacher version is seen as the final version, and on that version, our, is, um, uh, our search engine is also based on. Okay, so as I've said, we also have a search function. Um, it is possible to just look for videos, to, to browse through data, or uh, to make specific corpus queries. Uh, you can make combined queries according to the annotation layers, which um, you have in your database and uh, and the information in the metadata. And uh, now, uh, very quickly, um, I'll say something about the exercise module we have uh, created with the uh, authoring tool Idiomatic. Um, so this is a tool for creating online exercises and tests. It's specifically um, accustomed for language um, learning. Um, Idiomatic offers a wide range of closed and half open exercise types for language instruction. Uh, it is very easy to add multimedia to the exercises. Um, the student get in, gets intelligent feedback um, from the, the tool and it's also, uh, it monitors student uh, result, results. And the idiomatic uh, module is uh, linked to the Toledo learning environment uh, which we use in, in the association of k -Lo. Okay, so, um, because as I've said, there are many different um, language programs involved in this project and many different proficiency levels, so we uh, make a distinction between uh, four levels of uh, difficulty levels of exercises. On the first level, uh, the student is just required to recognize a language phenomenon, so the exercise types are multiple choice, drag and drop, and so on. 
and uh, so we, we distinguish four levels. On the highest level, it's a level of language translation. The student has to interpret a video or to transcribe or summarize it. Um, so this is the screenshot of uh, the exercise module. Um, okay, I have to move. Um, now I want to uh, conclude by um, uh, saying three last things. Uh, first, um, the video.in project aims at uh, realizing uh, three uh, sustain sustainability objectives. Uh, first of all, we aim at uh, sustainability of the technological education tool as a didactic model to other language programs within the association period. Um, secondly, we aim at a sustainable product um, through the creation of an open database with collaboratively annotated video uh, materials. And thirdly, we aim at didactic uh, sustainability. What I mean by that is uh, we want students to be involved in the further development of an open database through active work forms such as annotation and transcription of uh, video data. So thank you for your attention and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them. Where can we download your annotation tool? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, still in. Um, this is a prototype version, so I don't have it yet either. <laughs> I'm waiting for it, um, but um, not yet, not yet. But it will become available as open source. Uh, first, in, in this two years, we are just implementing it in uh, in Catholic in, within the, our association, but maybe afterwards. We are not. We are not already thought about expanding. Please do. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so all your video files, when you annotate them and transcribe them, are stored in, at one place and they can be retrieved very easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that cannot be uh, video files online. Sorry? That cannot be videos online. Yeah, you, you add videos from online video resources. Uh, you just click on the, you put a uh, link, video link, and it opens. But um, it has to, yeah, now um, it's a little bit difficult with that. We have to um, convert the video file. If it's not streamed, we have to convert it into a streaming form so that it can be um, put in our engine. So that's the, the main requirement. It has to be streamed. Any more questions? No more questions? Okay. So, thank you very much, Ms. Farnes, for your first talk.